welcome to the Mission Reviews and Discussion Podcast. I am your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is Silver Quill. Rick, we have to kill the child. No, the child did nothing wrong. She's gonna. True that. <laughs> and also joining us is Sapphire Heart Song. But Silver, she's an angel, didn't you hear? So is Angel Bunny. Doesn't mean I don't want some rabbit stew. <laughs> So anywho, in today's episode review, we are going to review Season 8, Episode 12, Mark 4 Efforts. In this episode, the Kiriwak Crusader tries to convince Twilight Sparkle to let them into the School of Friendship, even though it's clear that they've already mastered the curriculum. And yes, so before we head into the review, let's get first impressions out of the way. Silver, what do you think of this, well, story? Here's the funny thing. It's a story that actually shows the School of Friendship at its best and worst. It's best in that we actually get to see them teaching and actually doing a decent job of it. And worst in that Twilight is not a very good head mare. At least not in this episode. And of course, it will now forever live in infamy as it introduces us, introduces us to a certain character. Ah, uh, yes. The certain character that is really, really interesting. And very bipolar. Well, and... Uh, We'll get into that in the full review. But all in all, it, it's an interesting episode and one I mostly enjoy. I just wish Twilight had come out looking a little uh, little bit better as a leader. All right. And Sappy, what about you? I don't know how to feel about the, the new character that was introduced. Because there was only one thing roaming through my mind and I was right during... Ever since she appeared, big and loud. <laughs> Anyways, oh, but, but yeah. So... Heck, the voice actor for Cozy Glow on Twitter was like, "I have never heard of this character up until I played Cozy." So <laughs> <laughs> they, they had never heard of Darla Dimple until oh. you know until they. Uh, we're playing Cozy Glow during the time. Anyways. Oh, yeah. you, you know, uh, on a side tangent, um, I've seen uh, Cat Don't Dance, and it's pretty fun. Like, I remember watching it as a child, and I had a lot of fun with that movie. And knowing that Lauren worked on it, it's kind of, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Destiny, that I would enjoy her work. Kind of a homage, in a way. Mm-hmm. Ah, uh, you said it right. What? Who, me? Yes, I, I have friends who say homage. No, it's homage. Well, it's it's homage. But you, homage. homage. Sorry. Homage. Homage. I was very, very close. <laughs> no, you, gotta say, you gotta say it really pretentious, like homage. <laughs> <laughs> but, hey. Um... Really? I'm the only one who, who says that? No. <laughs> well, I do. Well, yeah, but apparently I'm one of the only few people who says it correctly. <laughs> well, it's not so that you're in everyday conversation. I know. Well, yeah. Potato. Anyways. <laughs> Anyways. Where where was I? Uh, anyway. About cozy glow and big and something. Yeah. I, I really didn't mind. Like, I wasn't really paying attention to the episode <laughs> other than her. Like, she had my full attention, mostly for one reason. <laughs> I could not understand her motivation. Yeah. Like, yeah, she, she explains it, but it felt like a total 180. Yeah, we will get into that in the full review. But as yeah. for me, uh, I like this episode a lot. It shows that the CMC do understand friendship and whatnot. But there is that part where I'm scratching my head saying, why can't the CMC go to your school, Twilight? I mean... If it's a school like any other, technically they should be able to get in. But it it, it shows that what <laughs> how to put this? It shows that difference in curriculum with the normal equestrian school and Twilight School, and also people don't really point out that Shirley School, which is the quote unquote equestrian government mandate school, is EEA approved, mm-hmm. while Twilight School is not. Twilight has her own rules anyways. Oh, that's another thing that I like. Actually, I feel like when we get into the review, we'll talk about it a little bit more. Like, their inter- 
introduction with Clumsy Glow. But yeah, I I did like the CMC like in this episode. Yeah. But anywho, um, those are quote unquote my thoughts for a bit. So let's head into the review. If you guys at home have not watched this episode yet, pause here. Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed the episode. And I find Cozy Glow very, very interesting. So anywho, we start off the episode with our heroes, the CMCs, trying to sneak into Twilight School. Doing the human ladder kind of thing and discovering that in said school, everybody eats cupcakes. Wow. So sweet and tasty. Cupcakes. Don't be too hasty. I want to go to the school where your job is to eat cupcakes. Yay. And play with butterflies and kick balls in classrooms. This is a fun school to go to. But note, it's also the only school... Well, this is the only time we get to see them just teaching. Every other time we've visited the school, it's been the main six screwing up <laughs> true true okay um before we head into the next scene I, I i need to ask you guys okay which curricular activity or class does make sense in this one because for me pinkie pie's friendship lesson makes a lot of sense or kindness or sharing class doesn't make a lot of sense for me but fluttershy kind of too but applejack i'm so confused what, teaching Buckball, which uh, is all about teamwork and coordination? That, and that sounds I, more like a gym class. Yeah. yeah. Well, but, gym is part of school. True, but yeah. she's not in gym. Or See, he, here's the major problem with the episode or the show with its classes. They don't really show who teaches what. No, they don't. They don't. But that's because, again... All we ever seem to do is check into the school when they're doing it wrong. Yeah, true. But at least I would... Okay, maybe in the first episode, they kind of did it. But I, I just want to understand what do the main six or main five here do? Because uh, we know that Glim Glam here is the school's counselor and she's kind of typecast into that role in school. So, okay. But... For Fluttershy, she's the animal teacher, and Pinkie Pie is the... I think they categorize it by their uh, their elements. Yeah, true. But uh, let's just say that it's rather confusing, and instead of telling us straight outright what they do, they make it vague and confusing. Mm -hmm. But anywho... Uh, we head off to the next page and we get to see... <laughs> next page, no. I mean next scene. And we get to see Twilight teaching her class. And she wants to teach the history of Equestria. And we finally get to see a real picture of Chancellor Puddinghead. Definitely think she's related to Pinky. Like, directly. Yep. Makes sense. Yep. While starting to teach the class... Twilight noticed three students, and they don't seem right. And yeah, the CMCs are there, and Twilight says, uh, Would you please follow me for a bit? And says, Kids, you can be in this school. You are already masters of friendship, and you don't really need to spend your time here. Why don't you go back to normal school so you don't have a tardy mark on your attendance record? I see, Norman, you're just going to skip over Spike and his new wings. Oh, wait, what? I see how it is. How Spike dare. Spike has I wings? That yeah. boy grew up. Spike has Our wings Our little now? track is growing up and you're just ignoring him. It's like adolescence all over again. <laughs> Spike has wings now? Oh, I didn't know this. He, he was basically flashing them in front of the class. Which, <gasps> oh, not gonna how lie. could he? He flashes in class. Ooh. Oh, yeah. He, he, he waves them all over <laughs> Chancellor Puddinghead's face. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. And also Grim Glam. She's bored. <laughs> That's because Twilight isn't giving her anything to do. So she feels kind of... This is where Twilight's starting to... It's not a positive presentation of Twilight. Meanwhile, Spike is turning the whole group into a pledge of dragonness. <laughs> oh my god. The dead poet society. <laughs> oh boys. So yeah. Oh, dragon, oh my dragon. <laughs> It's like, huddle up. Come on, huddle up. <laughs> no. 
Um, but still, but still, um, the CMCs are <laughs> the CMCs can't be in school, so they come up with a plan to try to get into school by well, unlearning what they learn. And so we start off with Apple Bloom not doing her chores and not listening to well instructions. And once she explains it to Applejack in a very um, not straightforward way, Applejack gets it. Ah, I see. Well, now, Apple Bloom, what about I show you a private lesson? Now, get to work. And next up is Sweetie Belle. And, well, S- Sweetie Belle is fun. Sweetie Belle is fun. Uh, so, Apple Bloom tried being disobedient, and Sweetie Belle tries to be annoying. And on the wiki page, it says that Rarity's line, Repeaty Bell was ad lib by Tabitha Saint Germain. I really like that. That that made this episode much more nice and awesome. <laughs> Repeaty Bell. I like that. <laughs> Repeaty Bell. Repeaty Bell. Repeaty Bell. And that's what she did. <laughs> Plus the, uh, just that image of her holding on to Rarity's hoof. The eagerness in her eyes. <laughs> Yay. Oh boy, the annoyance. So, being what you would call this annoying didn't work. And how about disguises? Disguises usually work, right? It worked for Agent 47. So, it gotta work for some other ponies, right? Maybe. Hell, it could have worked if she just shut it up. But no, no, she, she was excited at Rainbow Dash's story. <laughs> Too excited. Her enthusiasm does her every time. I know. Although, this is rather watershed for Rainbow Dash. She's actually turning down a chance to be admired. True, but when she's got a story where other students are very excited to hear the outcome of the story, it's like, you know, when you're telling a joke and somebody gets to the punchline before you can. Oh, you did not just do that. I know. So, uh, Rainbow Dash <laughs> shoes away, Scootaloo, and we still have two other ponies that are ripe for being conned, and alright, we get to see the con. So, it's like... Apple Bloom and Scootaloo are in an argument. A very convincing argument, by the way. And here comes Sweetie Belle. And she trips over Scootaloo's scooter. And they all fight. And Pinkie Pie and Fluttershy are so worried about this. Their friendship are in jeopardy. Oh no! And while doing all of this, the CMC says, Good job, good job. Yay, we're best actors! Woo! And failed. They're too good of friends to fake being bad friends. Yeah. I, you know what? I think they should fight over being living in the water and living on ground. Yeah, that, that could work. Oh, yeah. That, there you go. <laughs> That's all Apple Bloom could improvise right there. Hey, girls, which which part of Mount Eris was best? <laughs> Sequestria Harmonizing Heights. And then you get a music redub. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yes. So, anywho, back at the clubhouse... They have their checklists. They have their checklists out again. It's just like the good old days when they were looking for their cutie marks. True, true. And also, this time around, it's for getting into Twilight School instead. So, yeah. So, they check out the list. And there's one thing that they haven't done yet, which is crying. And crying does work. Yeah, right? Good idea, Scootaloo. And Scootaloo says, "Uh, I'm not crying there's somebody outside the clubhouse who's crying and ladies and gentlemen we are introduced to our deus ex machina no not really to our plot device and said plot device is named cozy glow behold her cuteness she is the coming of doom There you go. I thought she just deserved a musical introduction. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. So yes. Okay. One thing I'd like to say before we go on. Mm-hmm. I love how the CMC approach Cozy. Like, their motivations are actually pure. Mm-hmm. They're not looking to use Cozy Glow to get into the school or, you know, they're not trying to use her as a plot device. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That I can definitely appreciate. The story is, but yes, but they are not. Yes, they, true, they are true. pure, 
pure of heart. True, true. They are tutoring. They are tutoring for the sake of tutoring and not trying to do any other motivation, you know? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's actually nice. <laughs> Because most people do this type of thing like, oh, I'm I'm going to use you to get what I want and act like I'm not expecting anything in return, but actually I, I expect something in return. I don't see that here. Oh, yeah. That's obvious by how the CMC act and do an act. But Cozy Glow here... Okay, let's have a quick discussion on Cozy Glow because she is an interesting character. Uh, she plays the part of a innocent little girl who is kind of well down on her luck or very uh, yeah, so yeah that's an indiscretion distress kind of situation <laughs> oh my goodness yes over me now yes el, el diablo <laughs> oh boy so anywho uh, as as the episode goes on like she herself here is kind of what's the word I'm looking for? A split personality, like she's very how's the word I'm looking? What's the word I'm looking for? Um, dual nature, split personality, snake in the bush, something like that. Like she portrays herself as innocent, but the way she talks, the way she acts, seems very contradicting to what she is. Well, it, it's it's forced innocence. You can tell. That this cuteness is artificial. That is true. I felt that the minute she was like, oh, thank you for asking. Because I was like, that that sounds pre-rehearsed. I know. And, okay, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Uh, okay, spoilers for the end of the season. Fun fact, this this recording has uh, is recorded, what, two weeks after the season finale, was it? Has it only been two weeks? I'm guessing. Fans have been going rather cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs over for Cozy Glow's fate. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But that is another discussion for another day. But the real question here is, is this the moment where she already made the deal with the devil or not yet? Let me tell you about a story about the Cozy Glow and the thief in the night. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> we should download that song. <laughs> but what are your guys' opinion on this? Here's my philosophy on her uh, scheme in general. She knew where she wanted to be to acquire power. It was just a question of how do I get in there and then what do I do? Mm -hmm. So all this is a grand scheme to get in. Then she'll start worrying about how do I get what I want. Okay. But the thing is, she's already in the school to begin with. So... Getting in was not yeah, much of true. a challenge. It's just that the part where I find it really hard to believe where, okay, she is manipulating, quote-unquote, manipulating the CMCs to tutor her to be good at school, yet failing... You know what? Um, we're just going to skip here to a few parts because the discussion kind of skips a whole bunch of what's going on. So anywho, she manip- uh, I won't say she manipulates the CMC, but she asks the CMC for help to help her with a, her schoolwork. And with that, the CMCs are kind of happy because, well, even though we can't be in school, we're glad that we're able to help uh, Cozy here succeed in school. So that's a good compromise. Actually, uh, you're right. I, I did blank that she was already in the school. Mm-hmm. But I realize there there is a benefit to to this drama. Oh. She gets Twilight Sparkle's attention. True, but at the same time, too, do you really want to get the attention? It's one of those situations where it's better to lay low. It is, but at the same time, you can't maneuver if you're hiding all the time. This is high risk, high reward attitude. She puts on this big show is willing to dance on failing out of the course, which I don't know how you fail out of friendship school, but there you go. Mm-hmm. And, but in the end, Twilight may, may be like, oh, you've you've been working so hard. How would you like to help me with uh, some extra projects? Mm-hmm. And just like that, she's in a position where she has 
greater access to information, greater access to the leadership of the school, and access to sensitive documents and, as we'll later learn, relics. In some ways, I think this is her using the Crusaders as stepping stones to get to a position where she could form a more permanent plan. Which does make sense because one of the step, I guess, is she passed her, I won't say exams, but passed, uh, did well on her class. And with that, she asked the CMCs to tutor her some more, which she, quote-unquote, um, enact her plan to fail said class. And with that, it puts the blame on the CMCs where Twilight is very angry at the three of them and questions why would you sabotage Cozy Glow? This is where Twilight really doesn't come off as a good leader because she doesn't even ask them questions. It, this is her making very large assumptions and being very harsh as a result. And I'm very thankful for the Heartswarming Club because I'd like to think that this episode gave her a moment to pause, reflect, and learn from her mistake so she could do a better job in that episode. Heartwarming Club. Which one that again? Oh, yeah, the Christmas one. Quote-unquote Christmas. <laughs> yes, which we totally won't have a special for in October. I wink, know. Wink. <laughs> I know. Wink, wink. It was like, next week, something like that? Wink, wink. <laughs> yes. Yes, next week, week. Wink, wink. So, anyway, yeah. Uh, Twilight calls in the CMCs and scolds them for sabotaging Cozy Glow and bans them from the school. Which is kind of a jerk move to do, but still, as a person in power for said school, I can see why she did it. But her actions are kind of, what's the word I'm looking for, harsh and rash. Twilight being rash? Harsh the thought. I know. But have you ever noticed that Twilight's impulsiveness usually affects the CMC directly? Miss Moana needed spell? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Although, this is down the road, but when Starlight banishes Discord from the school grounds, oh my goodness, the the burn mark she left in the landscape. <laughs> Imagine if Twilight tried that spell on the CMC. Oh my goodness, no. I'm banishing you! <laughs> <laughs> Alright. So, anywho, um, as we carry on, uh, Closey Glows overhears this and feels guilty about it, like... Oh no, I got my friends expelled or I got my friends banished from the school. Oh no, that's not good. And she goes to start at Grimmer for some guidance. And once she explains what's going on, I like the face that she did. And oh my goodness, Silver, do you remember the line what she said? Oh, please continue. Oh, that's devious. I, I mean, please continue. Yes. And <laughs> that new meme-tastic face. I know. Uh, the animators did a good job. I I really want to see how the, uh, what you want to call this, animatic looks like for this one because they got to find some inspiration somewhere. <sighs> but still, with that meme-tastic face out of the way, um, Starlight Gamer discovers a way to make everything amends. And, okay, pause here. What was this all about? What, why Cozy did this? Well, there's, I guess that's the question. <clears throat> Her oh no, it's like, oh no, I was I was trying to get those three in so they could be my stooges. You know, probably easier to interact with them uh, since they're her age. Of course, I'm kind of assuming because I know her end goal in mind. This is in some ways working at the conclusion and going backwards. True. But at the same time, too, I, I doubt that using the CMCs as stooges kind of works because they're out of your league. I mean, like, you're not going to trick them to do stuff. They, they've been around the block a while now. I don't know. She tricks them pretty regularly, it seems. Regularly? I thought their interactions were very little. Well, on screen, but she... But, okay... The one time they try to trick her, what happens? They got locked up in the broom closet. Yes, she she out devi she's more devious than they. True, true. Either way, this really gets Cozy Glow on Twilight's radar, where she can now uh, interact with the head mayor directly. Okay, mm 
But anywho, uh, we carry on to the next scene where the CMCs are cleaning the schoolhouse. And okay, who finds this a bit jarring? Like, do you have you guys done this at your own school before? Never had to clean off gum. But sweeping the floor, whatever it is. Have you guys done that? Nope. Mm, it's not really. A, once upon a time, I think that was a punishment system. Huh. But if you take a look, see, this is not really punishment. This is kind of a school thing. Like, everybody's doing it. Well, it turns out they're all just exceptionally naughty. Except Diamond Tiara. In a bizarre twist of fate, Diamond Tiara is not cleaning up the school. <laughs> but okay, um, let me uh, break it down for you for a bit. Because for me, this is not that strange. Because over in... Well, I'm assuming uh, most of Southeast Asia, I'm guessing. I, I know Japan does it, but uh, we've done, we have this class roster where certain number of students, let's say we have 40 students or 30 students in the class, and a selected number of students clean the class each day. It's like a um, roster of students who sweep the floor, uh, clean the chalkboard, arrange the tables and whatnot, and it's assigned to each student, and each student has to do it on X, X day. And it's for me, this is kind of normal. And in Japan, they do so too, and I think most of Southeast Asia, I'm not 100% sure about Singapore. Singapore does kind of copy the America system, but in Southeast Asia, we do that. So to me, this is kind of normal. It's fallen out of favor here in America, I think. Probably. Yeah. Because it it messes with the union, yo. <laughs> and also child labor laws. <laughs> Boys. So anywho, Starlight Glimmer goes to Cherry School and asking for the CMCs to follow her to the School of Friendship. And oh no, they did something bad. Twilight really will uh, use her banishment spell on it. <laughs> yeah, and it's just like, oh no, like... They're they're in deep trouble, yeah. You got your sisters, you got the elements. They're gonna be stoned. Well, you know, being stoned, I I think that's at college, you know, especially <laughs> if you have a hippie professor. <laughs> uh, but you know what? Nah, they they're not being punished. Instead of being punished, they're being graduated because they already learned friendship and blah blah blah. So they graduated, yay, yay. So, they just now have to figure out what to use their degree for. Nothing, because they're still in normal school. So, yay, it seems that um, Twilight overreacted and apologizes to the CMCs and tells them that, hey, girls, uh, I'm sorry for overreacting, and Cozy Glue explained everything, and you know what, you guys? are awesome at friendship and you don't really need to go to the school anymore because you graduated. And how about a position of a tutor here? We really need some more staff here because nobody's coming to our school to teach. We got that one big guy before, but that big guy didn't really do well. Also, uh, graduating from here, it's like having a communications major. It's utterly worthless. Ha! Don't you mean an art degree? Well, gee, thanks! <laughs> <laughs> That's not a word. <laughs> hey, I graduated with a BA in communications. It was an uphill battle. I graduated in multimedia. <laughs> uh, <boys>. <laughs> I'm still in school. <laughs> well, have fun. <laughs> uh, we are your future, Safi. <laughs> we are your future. <laughs> well, your future, Silver, I wouldn't mind. Wow. Eh? But I can't see myself growing up in Malaysia. Sorry, <laughs> Oh, wow. That's sad. So, anywho, the CMCs graduate. Uh, they become uh, ordinary tutors for the School of Friendship. And they all run to the camera. And scene ends. Yay. So, what do you guys think of said episode? Silver. Well... It is one of the better presentations of the School of Friendship because most of the staff is on point, except for Twilight. This was a stumbling point for her, but thankfully she'd rebound with the Hearts Warming Club. It is a good introduction of the demon child <laughs> because you can tell something's up. Just We, we kind of skipped over this because the montage of, of tutoring her 
you know, it's it's fun energy, but it's not a lot of commentary. Except when she calls magic control, and when you see the elements reflected in her eyes. Yes, yes, but you know, the elements kind of uh, the element kind of thing is just you know hyper focus on it. So uh, something to oh, do. With oh no, there, there, there is a, a truly there's a screenshot on the MLP wiki of her with the element of magic in her eyes. Oh yeah, and also um, she also has that for the generosity and so on. Okay, actually, I'm looking at a at a picture of Sweetie Belle, and she looks pretty evil too. Yeah, <laughs> where the caption says honesty. Look at Sweetie; she's like, Josh Scorcher has said she's a super villain in training. Now, you, looking at that, I'd almost believe it. Oh yeah, you know, there's always the quiet one, but you can tell that there's an ulterior motive to uh, Cozy Glow, j- even without her expressly stating it. Uh-huh. You know, something something's up. With this, with this filly. Yeah, and at first I attributed to her being well, not from Ponyville and not lear- not learning about friendship or not learning how to be a nice pony. So I attributed to that at first because why is the reason you go to the school of friendship to learn friendship, right? Or to you know just just bum around until you can like you know, start your own projects. Uh, but but still, it does explain a bit. But at first, I thought her attitude was because she was from probably Manhattan, where the ponies were rude or something like that. But the more we know, that's her personality and stuff. Yeah. The more we know, the less we understand. Yep. Is that all, Silva? Yeah, I think that's a good chunk right there. All righty then. And Seppi, what do you think? I like how it didn't go down... Like the, I'm going to manipulate you for my own sake route from the CMC's end. Because a lot of cartoons do that. Oh, true, 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 true. I, I think I displayed like my feelings towards the beginning of it. Just because I'm pretty straightforward when it comes to how I feel about things. Okay, okay. And, yeah. <laughs> it was a good episode. It was a lot of fun. And, you know, just overall, I... Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's right, that's right. And as for me, I like this episode. This episode was fun. And knowing what we know about Cozy Glow, it does make sense. But not knowing the end does kind of makes you think about, oh, where oh, is she going to change and improve? Is she going to be one of those characters where we'll get to see more of her in the future? And yeah, she plays a part. She plays a part somehow. But... As for the current situation that we are in now, I hope that she made a change for the better, uh, improve her personality as time goes on. And as for the teachers, uh, they're fun, they're fun. Twilight was a jerk and uh, Glim Glam was awesome. Glim Glam is starting to be the star of the show. She has the best one-liner, she has the best faces and she has the best memes. You're going to set off all the other fans. <laughs> uh, we're like, ah, no, I hate Twilight. She should replace Twilight. <laughs> I'm not saying that she's replacing her. I'm just saying she's going up in the world. And those are my thoughts. But anywho, Silver, what are we going to do next week? Well, next week is something special. Mm. Uh, we are going to depart from ponies for just a little bit. Yes. And instead focus on... A grand story, a story that is honoring the family, the memories of lost loved ones, and fighting your future by honoring your past. We are going to talk about Disney's Coco. Yay! <gasps> I love that movie. Also, it kind of ties into Halloween. So, yay. Yes. And, okay, uh, yeah. I, I have to do a mental check note on this one because by the time that this episode review comes out, Probably Halloween will have been passed, and probably we'll do Coco first before this one comes out. You know, this wibbly wobbly timey wimey stuff. So yeah, it doesn't really matter anymore. Oh, it, it's a madhouse. I know a madhouse. I know, but still, it's not as mad as Coco. <laughs> oh, I I know what's happened. Cozy Glow has gotten to him. Oh no, she's polluted his mind. Oh no, <laughs> the demon child has possessed Norman. Quick, I need a young priest and an old priest. <laughs> oh. Oh, God, no. Probably not. <laughs> but anywho, but anywho. So Coco will be I'm just... soon-ish. 
I'm just going to have to start smacking Norman until he uh, <laughs> get the demon out of him. I'll beat the devil out of you. <laughs> why, why does it remind me of DMC4's intro? God dang it. Uh, well, anyway, if you have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at dmdsshowgmail.com. You can also reach us on the Twitters. The show's Twitter account is at the MDS Show, and my personal Twitter account is at Norman Sanzo. And Silver, where can the good people find you? Well, you can find me on YouTube under Silver Quill, also on DeviantArt under MLP hyphen Silver hyphen Quill. Uh, you can find me on the Twitters, where I will share the occasional thoughts, but mostly just start a gift war with somebody. And every Wednesday, you can find me on Equestria Daily posting a, either a review or editorial. And I just want to say, if anyone does want to voice concerns, voice a concern that Norman has been possessed by the devil. <laughs> uh, A.K. Close the Glow. Oh, uh, no. <laughs> I guess I have to pull my devil trigger. Oh, <laughs> uh, gosh, no. So, anywho, uh, Sappy, where can the good people find you? Well, you can find me on Twitter via Anime Christy. Basically, just look up Anime Christy and you'll find me and my dead YouTube channel, which I'm trying to revamp into an art channel. Anyways, that that's not a guarantee because I've uh, not been able to hold up my word before. <laughs> Anyways, you can find me on Twitter or Deviant Art, drawing many, many arts, including traditional now, because I, I now have a Copic obsession. Yay, Copics are fun. <laughs> Yay. You don't even know what that is, do you? I do, I do. Those are really good color markers where it's water-based or oil-based? I don't remember. Alcohol. Ah, alcohol-based. And they have two tips. Like, those are um, God sent. Like, uh, they really do uh, well. They're, they're not just, like, dual tips, though. They're velvety dual tips, and they're the best thing ever. <laughs> Anyways, you can find me anywhere at Amy Christie. All October, I'll be doing Inktober. <laughs> awesome, awesome, awesome. Also, please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, YouTube, and don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date, and stitch the radio, and also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on PonyBlive.com. Links are in the show notes. Also, this show that you're listening to now is also available on iTunes and Stitcher Radio. Do subscribe to get the Review and Discussion Podcast on the go. If you would like to support the show, you can do so at Patreon.com. With every support, you'll get a week's early access to the Review and Discussion Podcast, exclusive and deleted content. And a huge thank you from me. Talking about thank yous, I'd like to thank Master of Black, Amy, Charles, Lucky Knight, Tristan, Starstream, Lurker Cat, and also Jeffy. Thank you so much, guys, for the awesome support. You're great. So anyway, I have been Norman Senzo. I am the Silver Quill. And I am the Safe. And we'll guys catch you next week with another fun episode of the MBS Show. See ya. Adios. Bye-bye. So, who would have guessed that the curly-haired demon child is a villain? Ooh. Anyone with eyeballs. Yeah.